Now here's a topic I discuss on every one of my photo safaris because it is in fact a question that gets asked by most of my guests. In this video, I will share with you how I sharpen and denoise my images in Lightroom, especially those that have a higher ISO value. Now, Lightroom has come a long way with the introduction of AI and it's now a one-stop shop for almost all of your imaging processing needs, especially as a wildlife photographer. I'm still a big fan of an image that looks natural, a classic wildlife image. I think with so much advancement in post-processing, we really need to be careful not to lose that natural look and feel, that classic image. It's easy to create images that blur the edges of what's real and what's not. Sharp images are fantastic, but I've seen many photos that are not sharp and still steal the audience's attention because of a great story. The same goes for noise. Noise has been with us since the beginning of photography and really can give an image a natural look and feel. We don't want every photograph to be denoised to such an extent that it starts to look uh, unreal. With that said, the technology in Lightroom now allows us to get rid of that noise that becomes an actual distraction to the viewer and to us. Another thing that it has done for my photography is allow me to get content in low light that before was impossible. I can now push my camera to the absolute limit in terms of ISO to get shots in low light, to capture detail and movement and behavior that five years ago was impossible. I know that even though my ISO values are high, I can rely on Lightroom to get rid of excessive noise. I can still get a usable, printable image in poor light, the worst kind of light, because of what I'm able to do in post-processing. So I've selected a few images for you to have a look at and to edit with me. I'll talk you through the process I use to both sharpen and denoise my photos. I've selected a bunch of great photographs for you to have a look at. Some travel type content, some wildlife action content, some with really tricky light and daylight, a good variety just for you to make sense of what it is that I'm talking about. So I think let's kick off just with a, a good easy portrait right over here. This is a tiger um, and this is a first, uh, as you know, it's a tiger. This is the first, um, the raw file that we're going to look at and just to show you the noise. So you can see along that eye, uh, along the edge of the frame here, there's a lot of noise uh, hiding in there. There's definitely some noise on the eye of this cat as well. Now, I've already processed the denoise version, but I want to show you how exactly that works. When I work on this file, it is important to I'm just going to go into the develop panel here to head on to detail and to work through these sliders. Now, there's four sharpening sliders for you to think about here. And in all honesty, I seldom use the middle two being radius and detail. Uh, I think uh, if your image is really out of focus or it is something you want to focus on, the sharpness, you can play around with that. But I find the default setting in Lightroom gets uh, me by long enough and I've done great prints of that uh, kind of resolution as well. The ones you do want to look at uh, is the top one, the amount of sharpening you apply, as well as the masking levels. All right. So if I look at this image here, masking, what that basically does is when I, when I toggle that slider left and right, there's not a huge difference. It's very difficult to see the difference in terms of the image. You know, you can't really see the change on the image. So what you want to do is there's a, 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 a way to see the actual amount of sharpening being applied to your file. If you go into your keyboard on Mac, it's the, com the option button. And I think on PC, it's Alt. And when you hold that in, let's reset the masking value to zero. When I hold option down and click on the slider button, you see my screen turns white. Now, with the white screen, basically what that implies is everything in white will be sharpened. Now, if this is a great image I took and I want to bring it through here, I don't want the whole image sharpened, especially not if it has noise. Now, this image has got a noise value of 4000 ISO. I don't want um, sharpening applied to the entire image. So I want to help um, Lightroom decide where is the portrait, where is the area of detail that I want sharpening applied. It's looking for texture, detail, lines, shapes. It wants to ignore, or I want it to ignore, the smooth um, areas where there is no detail. So if I click on Option, click on that slider and move it across to the right, you'll see 
that now the tiger is lit in white and some black. But if I keep going, keep going, you'll see that on the bottom right and left of the tiger, there's still some detail. And right about there is when only the tiger is lit by the white at a value of about 75. And the rest of the frame is now dark. Now, in an ideal world, that's what you want, right? You want the sharpening on your subject. You don't want it everywhere else. But Lightroom struggles to do that in a noisy image. It picks up on the noise, the grain. And I want to get rid of that. So before they introduced denoise, we had to take uh, our images to programs like Topaz and DxO. And while I love them, I just before Lightroom to do denoise, I used uh, DxO, Pure Raw, to denoise my images. I think the software in Lightroom now is more than adequate enough. I think um, whether it's Topaz or DxO or Lightroom, it's very similar. But I do think Lightroom has the edge in the sense that it's an all-in-one package. You can do it in here. You don't have to do it externally. It's faster. It's more efficient. To me, it just makes sense. And honestly, in my opinion, um, if you're going to nitpick it, maybe you'll see a difference. But I genuinely love what Lightroom have done. And I think it's a product that they'll keep improving on and just make better and better and better. So before we get to that, I have to now select what it is that I want to mask out. And at about 75, my tiger is white and the rest around it is black, just like you can see there. So that's good, right? But now what I've seen photographers do, and this is crucial, you have to listen, is they take that masking slider all the way to the right, often beyond 70, outlining your subject. Remember, everything in white will be sharpened, everything in black won't be sharpened. If you push it too far to the right, there are components on your subject that won't be sharpened. You don't want that. You don't want to outline your subject as white as possible. So much white, the more white, the sharper it is and the better your final image will look. So if I take this slider more and more, you'll see there's more black on the cat's face, which means no sharpening will be applied. Bring it to the left better, but ideally that's more or less what I wanted. I really want that tiger white, but I can't because there's too much noise. Now, enter denoise. Just below the sharpening panel, there's denoise, which is an AI-driven tool. Now, if I select that, it brings up a little pop-up menu, enhance. Now, there's essentially three things you can do here. Denoise being one of them, uh, improve the raw details of your file or super resolution. So in this case, I don't want super resolution. I don't want to make it bigger, which is great. Um, I really just want to focus on denoise. And the great thing is when you do that, automatically the raw details are enhanced. So you really get a super enhanced file. It makes it better, sharper, crisper, um, and just improves the overall look of your image. On denoise, there is an amount slider. So you get to choose how much it is that you want this filter to be applied to. So is it, do you want a lot of denoise? Is it a very noisy image? Do you want less? And the way to do that is you'll see there's a little hourglass there or a little magnifying glass, sorry. Um, zoom out, zoom onto the area of your concern, which in my case is the eye. And let's run at this. So now I can look, okay, cool. This is looking great. Um, I move it around a bit just to make sure that I'm not adding too little or too much. So it's not looking bad. Let's take it up to 65. Just clean it up a little bit more. Round about there. Now if I run it through, I think this is more or less where I want this to be. 60, yeah, so let's do that. Um, it says here, yeah, AI settings such as content that we remove and masking will be updated automatically, which may cause visible changes to re the results. It's just, some, just something to be aware of. But let's say 66 and click enhance. Now it's gonna work on that for me in the background. It takes a few seconds, depending on the size of the image and the speed of your machine. But that's it. Now, before, as I showed you, it was really difficult to correctly sharpen or to accurately sharpen a lot of your subject because of all that noise along the edges. But what we've done now in Lightroom is we've said, no, hang on, let's clean that up. Then we're going to sharpen, okay? So that's my process for a noisy file. I'll clean it up first with denoise in Lightroom now. And then after I get my finished product, my denoise product, then I will apply the sharpening. The reason is, as you're about to see, 
It really does a great job and it gives you so much white on the subject, so much sharpening on the subject and the area that you want it in most. So let's look at that. It is now really clean. You can see the original before I applied AI, uh, denoise, look at that. You can see all the grain, still very nice, not a bad image at all, but look at how clean and beautiful this looks. That eye is really glassy and on the background, no noise to worry about. Now, when I sharpen this, if I look at this panel here, remember before, I'm gonna go back to the raw version. So here's my raw version. If I, on this masking slider, to get as much white as possible on the cat, before you can see the noise coming into the bottom there. So let's, let's just call it 75. It was about the level I had to go to to get rid of the noise being sharpened. On the AI denoised file, now, when I run this up, Look at this. Already it's clean at 12, okay? So I had to push that masking slider to 75 on the raw file, the original file, before I could get to a point where the cat was white enough. The denoised file I can now sharpen so much more effectively. There's so much white on that cat. Why? Because I was able to clean it up, clean up the noise, and now at a level of only 12, I already get it. And look at all that white on the cat. This file is gonna be sharp. And I can now push the sharpening. If you have a lot of noise, you can't sharpen excessively because the noise will pick up and it'll become quite grainy and just it'll just in, make the noise worse. Now I can really sharpen a lot and you won't have that effect. So we can take our sharpening up. Let's zoom in here on the face. Let's take it up to about 80. And that is looking great. So for wildlife images, if for the most part, I tend to stick between 70 and 100, give or take, depending on the image and the, and the file. If you cropped it a lot, be careful of over cropping or over, over sharpening. If the subject's really small, be careful of over sharpening, a few details and pixels and it'll just over sharpen. So in this case, I'm happy and just look at that. That is looking stunning. Really nice shot, just clean neat and no noise to speak of at 4000 ISO. Let's jump into another one. So for this next image, I'm going to choose an image shot in daylight. Now there was a series of factors um, that contributed to the tough light that this image was shot in. One being it was very cloudy, a really cloudy day, early morning and cloudy. So the light was poor and low. Secondly, I had to shoot fast. This cat was moving, dragging a carcass. Sorry for those that are a bit squeamish for what you're about to see. Um, but it was dragging a carcass and I had to uh, capture the action, freeze that motion, okay? It was walking to the other line, so I thought maybe another line would jump up and go and play or chase this cat. So my shutter speed was shot at 1600, I believe. Uh, 1600 of a second. On top of that, I was expecting the cat to come really close, so I shot at F8. So consider low light, I wanted detail, so I went to F8 and a fast shutter speed. What does that give me? High ISO, naturally. My camera ran all the way to 16,000 ISO. Now I know you guys are gonna be like, oh my gosh, 16,000 ISO, what are you gonna do about that? Not a problem. This right here is my original file, uh, unedited, okay? So you can see a lot of noise, a lot of grain. Uh, the eyes are looking really washed out and quite overexposed. When I look at my histograms, nothing is, uh, is too overexposed, but still, it just really doesn't look great, which is fantastic in today's cameras. This was on the Sony A1, and um, the dynamic range on that camera is really fantastic. But how did I fix this file? Now, again, if I just, off the bat, right here, want to sharpen this image with all that noise, watch this. Again, standard uh, levels that Lightroom imports at. If I click... Uh, um, option on my keyboard and I drag that slider, my subject, it's really difficult to separate that cat from the background. Can you see that? I'm up at 80 and I can still see noise in the back. Really tough. Now let's have a look at this image. This is an image that I finished and processed. Um, and you can see I've been able to calm down all the bright bits. And when I look at my sharpening now, so let's again reset that to the Lightroom levels. If I take that masking slider now to the right, look how much easier it is to get sharpening applied to my image, to my subject. That's at 50. And 
you can even push it lower to say probably 35 and still have a really good looking subject that you can now sharpen. If I take the levels up from 40, let's say up to about 70 or 80, that's a massive difference in quality. Look at that either side. If I look at where I've just come from, here is my raw file versus where I've ended up. The eyes look alive. Um, the background is clean. Unbelievable what you can do with 16,000 ISO. High shutter speed uh, for action. Um, everything was there, you know, like all the settings were set to create a good photograph. But during those conditions, it was just challenging. But because of the software, I was able to save this image and pull it back. Let's look at another example of uh, where this is really effective. Here is a daytime scene. Now, this is my raw file. What I did here is set my camera up on a tripod on the ground, remote controlled it, and elephants walked past, the elephants stopped. You're dealing with the worst kind of light, an elephant really dark and a sky really bright. Naturally, you're going to have exposure issues. Now, when, it, when you try and edit this in Lightroom and you try and lift the shadows, what's going to creep into the shadows? Noise. When you try and sharpen it, you're just going to be sharpening noise. It's terrible. Look at this as an example. When I edit this file and I lift the shadows on this file, have a look. Although it's lifting, there is a whole lot of noise in there. Okay, look at this. Very, very bad. Very grainy really really noisy which is understandable guys this was shot at an iso 6400 to make this exposure work now if i look at this image really tough conditions really noisy really grainy instead i can now see here and if i can apply a little bit of masking can you make it better in raw we can mask it to that point there but you still when the moment you try and sharpen anything you're just going to be sharpening pixels really bad result not great at all when I run this through denoise, this is the image that I then end up with. So enhanced, look at it in here. And because I've enhanced it, now when I hit my masking slider, I really can select my subject only. And when I hit the amount, it gets applied to the subject and it's nice and clean and looking crisp, looking a whole lot better. An image that was basically black across that elephant. The point is, we often think of noise in terms of low light. We don't often think of it as a daytime shot. You could end up with a high ISO because of certain conditions like the lioness in cloudy conditions expecting action or the elephant shooting into the sky. There's going to be noise on a really dark subject. So it's a really useful tool, this denoise function and something you can use in many different applications. And as you can see, I really tend to um, run through that first if I have a noisy image and then I do my sharpening. And I find it works well. You can clean it up nicely, uh, the background and everywhere you want. And then when you add your sharpening, it's not adding sharpening to the noise. It's just looking at the image, which is exactly what you want. Another great image that I want to look at here is what about you if you're a travel content creator? Uh, I think you often find yourselves indoors, right? As a travel creator, as an influencer, um, often it's indoor shots and low light kind of shoots, sunset, sunrise. The best light is often the light that we're challenged with in terms of noise. Now, here's a shot of my wife shot indoors at a place called Giraffe Manor. I've been there many times and you always have the same issue. You're indoors and you want a bit of a faster shutter speed and you want the subject in focus, you want the, uh, the, the person in focus, you don't want to be at 2.8 all the time, you want some depth, right? And in the end, you end up with noise. So if I look at this photograph taken of Lorette, I shot this on a 16 to 35 lens, a wide angle lens at an aperture of 5.6, and the ISO ran up to 6400. Now, I'm sure as a travel creator or content creator, you would have had this problem before. But the great thing is that this denoise um, function really helps you as well as a, a, an influencer to get good content indoors. When I run this through now, you'll see the moment I lift and try to edit this and try to lift shadows on this draft's face, really messy. Look at that terrible, terrible grain that just comes in everywhere. Not nice at all. You want to travel and post great pics, I'm sure. Now, if I go and look at the Go into my detail panel. Let's get up to denoise. Remember, we can change the value, how much we're being, how much denoise we're adding to the 
the image and it's just rendering it, it's looking at it, it's analyzing it. Focus on Lorette. And uh, let's get onto her face here. Look at the hair, look at all that noise here. And we can sharpen this a bit, not making it too unnatural. Let's say, let's go to 50. Let's just for fun meet it in the middle. All right, enhance. So let's let it run its course and see what it's gonna do. Okay, it's done. Let's have a look at the result. Here is a massive, massive difference. If I look at this now, everything is clean, free of noise. You can see every eyelash there. You can see the, the subject in the front. And if I now add a bit of sharpening, let's run this masking slider. We can see, cool, we want it just on the details. Uh, it is quite a detailed image, so let's just run it through there. And we now add a bit of sharpening. It really works out. You can see how beautiful the hair looks. The subject in the front is looking great. It's coming into frame. And all in all, it really looks a whole lot better. And this allows you now to shoot this type of content. All I've really done is lift the shadows and you, know, you can play around with the rest as you want. For the most part, I just wanted to show you how cool it is to use this even indoors as a content creator. This tool really helps you to get good shots. So get familiar with it, play around with it and create better content for your social media feeds. All right, so there you go. Some practical techniques that I use for all of my images. It's important to do as much as you can in the field. The more you get out of camera in the field, the easier it will be to finish your image off in post-processing. If there's a distraction like a tree or a bit of grass in the frame, then move. Carefully study composition. Make the right lens choice when it matters. Use shutter speeds and ISO values that make sense. I think part of the danger nowadays is to rely on the camera's ability and what we can do in post-production. It's easy to say that, you know, I'll crop it later or I'll fix it in Lightroom. No, no, stop doing that with all due respect. Push yourself in the field to get as much right as possible and to create images that has less work to do afterwards. Thank you for your time. I hope you learned something from this. And if you've not yet done so, please subscribe and even share this video. Would really appreciate that. I shared some links in the caption to my social media accounts where I share some great content on a daily basis. Follow me on there too if you can. See you again in the next one. Bye.